guided us on chasing night shadows. As usual, when we become aware of a sighting, an encounter, whether it be new or whether it be old, we'll do our very best to bring you the account in a miniature episode form that we've been calling Nightmare Nuggets. Today, I'm here on location in the town in which I reside, Clarksville, Tennessee. Recently, I went online to a Facebook group designed to unite the local community, and I posed a question to the group, which has tens of thousands of members. I asked, have you ever seen a strange creature or experienced something of a paranormal nature? And I was almost flummoxed by the overwhelming support that the post received. A staggering percentage of the members in the group claimed to have some supernatural or paranormal event happen to them sometime in their life, or they claimed to have borne witness to some kind of cryptid. Clarksville and surrounding areas seem to be rife with encounters of a disturbing nature. It is certainly an area of high strangeness. I don't know if it's because the region is part of the area that was known to Native Americans as the dark and bloody ground. Whatever it is, strange things are afoot. This will be the first of three Nightmare Nuggets focusing on possessions or hauntings here in Clarksville. The three parts will mingle in among our cryptid nuggets as a way to keep things fresh and interesting. Our first stop along this highway of hometown haunted horrors is located just a little ways off of the Interstate 24 exit ramp and is a local business that, until recently, flourished here in Clarksville. Mattress Express has been a staple in town for 20 or so years and this old mattress warehouse has been a source of white knuckled fear frightening numerous employees that worked at this location. Unfortunately, it is no longer in operation, but multiple salespeople and other staff have claimed that they would hear odd things while the store was open. Some people said that they would hear footprints walking around upstairs above the sales floor. Some said that the toilet in the back warehouse and upstairs would flush on their own. Employees would have the oppressive feelings while working alone in the warehouse and be filled with disquieting dread. Team members complain that they felt as though someone or something was watching them. I myself worked at this warehouse and while I personally never experienced anything of a supernatural or paranormal nature, some of the other employees were terrified to be there. However, I will say that you would absolutely have a creepy feeling as though someone had stepped over your grave while walking through the back room after the lights had gone out and the shop was closing. On numerous occasions, we were called upon to search the warehouse because employees were certain that someone was hidden in the building and walking around upstairs. The building has always been rumored to be haunted, and as the story goes, almost all of this land along this bustling three-mile strip up to the interstate was rural farmland and wilderness. All this land used to be vast and expansive fields and crops. According to one of the salesmen, years ago on this stretch of property, a man was working in his field, chopping down either tobacco or corn, when he met with an accident and severely cut his leg and severed an artery. Realizing that he was rapidly bleeding out, he started to make his way across the meadow to the main road. However, he didn't make it as he succumbed to blood loss right where the building now sits. Whether or not this unfortunate incident actually occurred, or if it was a common rumor of the property, it is, however, factual that this stretch of highway was comprised of large swaths of farmland and farms, and many of these farms contained family cemeteries, and it is widely believed that in many instances the land developers who were developing the area into a business district simply built over the tops of many of these cemeteries, and that has led many to think that the reason for the unusually high number of paranormal encounters in this area is due to the desecration of these graveyards. Another building on this very strip is actually rumored to have some sort of haint wandering the property. We don't know for sure which building it is, as those details have been withheld from us, but what we can say is that it was probably the old Ryan's restaurant or the Ponderosa restaurant, as those were some of the only eateries that would have been in business prior to 1995, which is when this haunting took place. Unfortunately, both places have been shut down in the past 10 to 15 years. This area is the most active location in the city because in this general region you can find numerous high-end restaurants, a movie theater, and a large mall that, interestingly enough, is said to be built over a sinkhole. But getting back on track to our list of hometown horrors, whichever this particular business was that housed a spectral intruder, it was absolutely along this stretch of road. 
and for the people who worked there, it was a frightening experience to be the one left to maintain it after the doors closed for the day, because after nightfall when the restaurant is closed and the customers have gone back to their homes, strange sounds are sometimes heard throughout the building, one of the most common being an odd scratching sound beneath the floor as if some unseen entity is scrabbling at the floorboards with long fingernails, desperately looking for an up through the floor. Other complaints included the sounds of someone walking through the building, making one think that someone had broken in and perhaps meant them harm. Certain individuals even reported an apparition that would stalk the building, surprising anyone that happened to see it. Clarksville is riddled with numerous hauntings and paranormal activity, some even more fantastical than the unusual accounts that we've just reported on. This video is only part one of a three-part series of events that took place in this very town, and it could even become a five or six part series depending on how many witnesses decide to share with us their tales. So keep on the lookout for that. This video is only part one of a three part series of events that took place in this very town and it could even become a five or six part series depending on how many witnesses decide to share with us their tales. So keep on the lookout for that. Once again, I'm Elijah Henderson from Cryptid SI and Chasing Night Shadows, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Nightmare Nuggets of Supernatural Suspense. And if you like these true accounts in miniature episode form, then please subscribe to our YouTube channels, Cryptid SI and Chasing Night Shadows, and make sure to click that little bell icon in the bottom right hand side to be notified when we post a new video. We upload videos every week barring some disaster, some days they may be a little bit late due to unseen challenges that our schedules sometimes cause, but I assure you they always make it online. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and if you'd like to be a guest in our soon to relaunch radio show, we would love to have you, and we'll have details regarding that online very soon. And if you've had an encounter with some kind of cryptid like a Sasquatch, Dogman, Skinwalker, or something else, or even a supernatural experience and you'd like to tell us about it, we would love to hear it. If you'd like for us to read your account for you, then please drop us a line and we'll make that happen. See you next time.